And so you, I think you can edit those as well. They have an edit function where you can go through and kind of reduce the amount of points around an image if you would like to reduce those. You can also do that in a 3D program as well, like Maya or whatever, if you're casting basically a UV over a certain area. That's just one way to kind of optimize certain things if there are too many tribes happening. Cool. Uh, there's and various tools you can do. You can do them manually. Uh, you can go into your favorite tool to do it. There's uh, third-party tools like Cruncher. I'll show you a quick demo of Cruncher. Mixamo has a neat one, Decimate, uh, Decimator. Blender has one built in you can get called Decimate. There's third-party services. Uh, one of them is simplygone.com where you can upload your model up to a site. It happens online. Um, really, really cool. I mean, there's plenty of services out there that do it, different ways to do it. Another another term is uh, retopologize. So you're gonna hear that a lot. Retopologize. If you would like to retopologize <laughs> your model, look for that in 3D programs, and that basically means it'll trace kind of a cage around a model, essentially, with a lower res, and you can kind of set that res and play with it depending on the package you're using. Very cool. Uh, you can also draw a separate low poly model for your mobile. Um, so maybe your your console game or your I would hope your console game has a different model than your mobile game. <laughs> yeah. Your console versus maybe your uh, PC-based game yep. versus maybe your mobile tablet. You can have different models for that, each one with different levels of resolution in them. Absolutely. Uh, so you can do that manually or use tools like Topogun to kind of reduce that geometry. Mm -hmm. Level of detail, L LOD is a pro feature in Unity and that will allow you to take multiple um, models. So if you're up close to your zombie, for example, it's a kind of a high def model. If that zombie's way off in the distance, why should you have to render all those, why should I have to calculate and draw all those tries? So you can use LOD level of detail saying, if it's a certain distance away, use that lower res model. When it's closer, show this model. Now LOD is a pro feature in Unity, but there are scripts and plenty of ways you can find on the net that you can actually do it manually inside of code. Yeah. And that's great for games where you have tons and tons of like armies from a distance or yeah. different things like that. Um, there's a ton of games out there that do that, and they'll actually have these really low res models and thousands of them running around. But as you get closer, they pop in the high res version so you can see like what they look like. Cool. All right, let's move to our last demo for this session, reducing geometry. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little quick tool that I like to use inside of Unity. It's a pay tool, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you, folks like some free features. Um, the two tools that we're gonna demo, I think you can get a trial of one of them. There's, again, many different ways to do this. You can do it manually. The problem that I found when I started game development, uh, I don't endorse any of these particular products. They just happen to be things that I use. Because when I started doing development, I would find uh, assets in the asset store that I would like, I would download them, and what I would find is that some of them really downloaded with really, really, really high poly count models. So, yep. uh, in fact, I was doing a, a game dev class, and this woman's like, oh, I got a shell from one of the third-party marketplaces for my game. And I looked at it, and it was like more than 50,000 vertices making up this little <laughs> tiny shell. And I'm like, ooh, you have a couple of these in your scene. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. So, And that's the problem. Sometimes when you download these assets from uh, the asset store, less on the asset store, because a lot of times you'll see the comments saying this is or is not good for mobile. But... Um, you get them from third-party marketplaces, and they're really nice models. And some of them are great for rendering scenes. You know, you might be doing an ad, and you want these 3D scenes in your ad. That's different than running a game. In a game, you really want to optimize that. And these are where you're going to use these, these decimator or retopology tools. Um, there's two ways of doing it. You can use a, a decimator tool that's going to use an algorithm to kind of manually compute what it thinks it should look like if it were a lower res or lower topology. Whereas if you use a manual tool like Topogun, or um, I think there's a couple other tools out there that do the same thing, but that'll let you actually manually go in and create the cage yourself around your model so you can actually specify where you want less detail and more detail shown. And that's great for character design and sometimes even terrain, which I'll show you. Very cool. So switching over to my computer here, let's look at, we're gonna do Cruncher on this guy. So I've got this kind of more high poly dinosaur here. I mean, look at all of those beautiful tries all over the place here. Tries everywhere. So you can come in here and specify a target quality, convert. And behind the scenes, see, now this is much more optimized here. Less tries making this up here. It's non-destructive. It will actually go into your base model and you'll find that you get different versions of it created that have different um, uh, different poly counts on it. Mm -hmm. So you can you can tweak this out a little bit, change them around, create different ones, experiment with the settings on here, say, you know what, I do or don't like this particular, um, maybe this is too much for me. In fact, I remember <laughs> a 
the zombie kid I was messing around with the other day, and I made it way him, up. And took it way up, and he had like this little head that was this tiny little long cylinder. So you can actually go way, way overboard with this. And sometimes you might need, not even if you're doing low poly models from the start. Like for example, our pumpkins and our zombie guy, they weren't exactly high res to begin with. There weren't a ton of tries. You might not even need to use these tools. These are specifically designed for when you have high res models, and then you actually want to reduce the poly count and make them more of low poly models. Yes. This is basically what that tool is intended for. Look at this. Look at this dinosaur. Right. This was initially pretty. There were there were little tries all over this model. I just cranked these settings way down. And look at this guy now. This is probably pretty good for mobile. One might even say you could probably go down a little further, and you can see you get this nice blocky effect here, which you'll notice on a lot of mobile platforms, but generally it's a smaller screen, so you don't notice it as much. And when you use tools like Topo Gun, if you notice what it did to his head, it kind of distorted his head a little bit in that model, and let's say you wanted to make that a lot more precise. That's when you use a tool like Topo Gun, where you could essentially retrace that head how you want to with less polys, and get more of the look of the character that you're trying to do in more of a low poly look. With that, why don't you show us a demo? Okay, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we're actually just going to use um, the terrain in Unity. Um, let's see. Do we have the terrain export tool in here? Let's see. Yeah. Want to show folks where they can get that? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go online and just search for terrain export script for Unity, uh, terrain OBJ exporter in the Unity Community Wiki. Um, just look for this specific script, and it's going to give you two versions. It's going to give you the JavaScript and the C Sharp. I always download the C Sharp ship, or script. That's just the one that I always kind of yeah. use when I'm making my stuff. Um, so you just want to download that script. Um, and where is the download for that script here? Or actually, no, I think you just copy it and make a new script and paste it in there. So we'll just copy this script. And we're going to make a new script. We have to put into, do we have a scripts folder in here? Actually, we have to put it in editor. We're going to make a new script. We're going to edit this script. Yeah, just double click on it to edit. Have this load up. Can Delete all this, paste in our new script that we got. We want to call this um, terrain. There's a name for it that we have to use, which is export terrain.cs. We'll save this. Save that, rename it in Unity. Always good in Unity to make sure that your name of your objects, uh, your classes, match the name that's inside of your editor. Sometimes you need some weird issues if you don't have it that way. And I think in this case, you can leave off the dot .cs on the end of that. Oh, really? Okay. I'm just kind of curious, did Unity take it off for you? Just out yeah. Of, uh... yeah, it automatically does that. Cool. So I have my new script that I got down there. You see where you get it online. Just go to the Unity Community Wiki, look for Export Terrain. It gives me this new option at the top called Terrain right there, and that'll give me my export function. So we're just going to make a new scene here to demonstrate what we're trying to do. I'm going to create some Unity Terrain. So we're going to go to our game object. I'm sorry. Component. I forget, where's the terrain at? Game objects. Now they moved oh, under game objects. Change it. 3D. 3D object. That's they right. just, uh, they just reorganized these yeah. movies. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to game object. We go to 3D object. We're going to go to terrain. Make our terrain. And this terrain's pretty substantial in size. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit in my settings, which is over here in your terrain settings. Click on the little gear icon there. Click on the gear. Um, 2000 by 2000 is. Huge. Huge. So I'm just going to bring that down to 200 by 200. And the max height, we'll just put it 30. Uh, maybe 60 for now. Sounds good. Go back in on our terrain. And then we'll use the terrain tools over here to kind of sculpt this terrain. OK. And for the interest of time, I'm just going to do something really quickly here. We're going to get a brush, increase the brush size, go on here, and just start making some cool terrain, right? So we go through here, we make some terrain, and increase the opacity, do some bigger terrain, and we'll raise this higher brush size, make the height a little higher than that. We'll do 30 on the height. Just go through and really start making these large mountains and different elements on here. 
Pretty cool, just sculpting out some mountains on there. Just sculpting out mountains and just kind of creating that terrain you want to create. One of the few things that you can actually create 3D by default inside of Unity is the terrain. The terrain tools are pretty cool. As I mentioned early on, Unity is really not a modeling tool itself, not a 3D asset creation, with the exception of uh, the terrain tools that are inside of there. So I'm just kind of making this little area that we want that looks a little... Cool, very cool. And just for to show you some different Let's just make this down. We'll do some different height areas on here. All right. That's pretty neat. And that's always a good way if you're trying to make these kind of plateaus that you want your characters to jump down on and stuff. I always use, like to use the uh, paint height tool, set the height, and then you can just kind of paint those heights so you can have these multi-level areas that you want your characters to move on. In other words, that just maxes out. You can't go any higher than a certain Exactly, point. and it'll even flatten it out for you too, which is great. Um, so for here, you know, I've got these different heights, and then I'm gonna do another one that's maybe a little smaller. We'll do it at a five, and maybe make it a little smaller so we can do like a crevice. We'll go through here, and we want this little kind of valley, right? And we want little areas in there that you know, the character can kind of travel to and what have you. So we have this little kind of canyon that we've created right here. Now, when you use a decimator tool, there's things that can happen when you use that tool. One, let's say I want this very, very precise. Because it's like an all or nothing tool, it's a, Yeah, it's an all or nothing tool. It kind of encompasses your geometry and it does an algorithm and it just does it basically all at once, right? It's not very precise. It doesn't know that, you know what, I want the edge of my cliff right there, yeah, always, yeah. and it has to be that way, because I want, you know, when you use a decimator, it might actually round this out even a little more. It might even round these out so it's not flat in here. There's a lot of things that can happen that give you unwanted results, right? But if you're using it for geometry that's in the distance or other things, it's great, right? It's, it's more, I'd say, distance-related stuff. It's a lot better for when you use these automatic tools. But let's say I wanted this exactly like it is, but right now there's just way too much geometry to get this to run on, let's say, a mobile device, right? And I wanna really, really make it as, as good as it should be. What I would do is I would use a tool like Topo Gun. And you'll notice a, a lot of industry, big industry companies use Topo Gun to do their characters, do high-res high characters that you sculpt in a sculpting program like Mudbox or ZBrush. You can actually take that down into a program like Topo Gun, get very close to the same result with like a third of the geometry, or wow. maybe even a tenth of the geometry that you had before. You bake all that detail in. I always like to use it um, for characters, and then I found, you know what, I'm gonna try it on geometry too, like how good would it be? And I found that it's actually really great to give me more of that custom, precise geometry that I want when I'm doing a game, which is really, really great instead of using these automatic tools. Because I noticed I would use automatic tools like T4M and other things, and while they're awesome tools, sometimes they would give me unwanted results. So. For what we're doing right now, I'll just show it to you in Topo Gun and how I use it in my okay, workflow. Cool. Um, here's the geometry I made. Just really quickly, we kind of threw this together just to kind of show you what we're doing. And in here, I'm gonna export this geometry using that script that we got. You're gonna get this new option up here called Terrain. That won't exist unless you have that script in editor. You're gonna use that export terrain.cs tool. You're gonna use that, go export to OBJ. And okay. OBJ is a 3D for file format. That you One can of the common in. formats, FBX, OBJ. Exactly. And you can open this. Once I export to OBJ, I can open it in Maya. I can open it everywhere. And it's going to give me the actual geometry I want. It's going to give you two options in it, too. It's going to give you the option to export it as quads or the option to export as triangles. I'm going to export it as quads because most 3D model programs, programs that you use, you can actually model in quads, and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Triangles becomes more of a headache. Even though Unity uses triangles, it's good to export this in quads so you have more of an editable model that you can use. Uh, I see. So you can, also, you can also export it in a specific resolution, and it will degrade it for you when you do that. So we're going to export it in full resolution with quads. Let's export our model. We'll export it to our desktop. We'll just call it terrain for now. Export that OBJ. And then it's gonna save out that OBJ for you. And it's a really, really great script that so many wrote for this. It <laughs> really, really helps out a ton. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Thank you, whoever um, wrote that script. <laughs> exactly, but I think his name's on that Unity Wiki. Um, so if you, you, now that we have our terrain exported, we'll close Unity. Well, let me close some of this other stuff I have. We'll go into Topo Gun, and this is Topo Gun. And Topo Gun, you can get on topogun.com. They allow you to download a trial version, but you can't save out anything, which is, we won't be able to save this out, but I can kind of show you how to do it in Topo Gun. So once we're in Topo Gun, the controls are very, very similar to Unity and or Maya, if you use Maya. You use Alt to kind of navigate around and come in and out. You can use F to focus on things exactly the same way. Um, you're gonna want to set up a project, which we had already done. 
and then you're going to want to load in they load in your reference object right here. So you mm -hmm. click load reference, and then from there we go to our desktop. We find that terrain object that we created, and we load that in. And it brings in that terrain, and there's our terrain we exported from Unity. Wow. See it right there, right? So it sees everything, everything exported, located, import,